I love you, Azula. I do. Princess Azula. Why did she turn out the way she did? Did she deserve a redemption arc? Did she get what was coming to her? This is Avatar Discussions, and today we will be answering all of these questions, and more, as we take a deeper look at Azula and why exactly she is the way she is. Before we start this video, we would like to say that we are not medical professionals, and all claims about Azula's mental health are purely for the discussion only. Azula was born Princess of the Fire Nation to Ursa and, at the time, Prince Ozai, later crowned Fire Lord Ozai. She was named after her grandfather, Fire Lord Azulon, and followed in his footsteps, becoming a firebending prodigy early in her life. Her young mastery gained her a lot of attention which ended up making her favored by her father over her brother Zuko. Regardless of being the younger of his two children, Ozai started grooming her to take his spot on the throne at a young age. She was never close to her older brother. She preferred to taunt and tease him. In any event, when she was just nine years of age, Azula showed her characteristic abilities, alongside her inclination for vindictiveness and flawlessness. When Tai Li one-upped Azula in cartwheeling, right after Azula had fallen, she pushed her down and laughed. When she saw young Mei trying to hide her crush on her brother Zuko, Azula used her acting and deviousness to persuade her mother to make Zuko play with her. She went on to put an apple on Mei's head during their game and set it on fire, forcing Zuko to tackle Mei into a fountain to put it out. She enjoyed embarrassing both of them. Truly a megalomaniac, Azula has been striving for supremacy from an early age, suggesting that her father would make a better, more powerful Fire Lord than the real heir, her uncle Iroh. He found out his son died and he just fell apart. Which in effect caused Azula to call him a loser and a quitter. She also displays the slightest disrespect for her grandfather Azulon when her mother told her of the death of Luten. Azula said, he's not exactly the powerful firebender he used to be. Shortly after receiving the news of the death of Luten, Azula and the rest of her family went before Fire Lord Azulon, where she put her firebending on an amazing display. She then wore a smug look as she watched Zuko attempt the same performance and ultimately fail. As Azulon sent everyone out of the room except Ozai, Azula grabbed Zuko and hid behind the curtains. From there, she looked at her father's suggestion that he be made Fire Lord rather than Iroh. As Zuko fled out in fear of Azulon's anger, Azula stayed there to watch with delight. Azula then allegedly heard her grandfather ordering her father to kill his firstborn, Zuko a fact she wasted no time joyfully revealing to him. She taunted him until her mother angrily dragged her away for a private conversation. It is not clear what happened after that, but Azula was next seen playing with the knife that Zuko had received from their uncle Iroh, and casually announcing that their grandfather, Fire Lord Azulon, had passed away, and that their mother was missing. Soon after, she watched the coronation of her father, laughing mischievously as her father is deemed the new Fire Lord. Over the next few years, no love or friendship was formed between her and Zuko, as Ozai started to prefer her over her brother during this time. After the issues with Zuko and the war room escalated, Ozai orders Zuko to fight an Agni Kai. Azula watched alongside Iroh and Zhao. When Ozai burned her brother's face, scarring it, she was seen laughing and watching with no sign of guilt and without being bothered. When Zuko was exiled from the Fire Nation, Azula was officially Ozai's heir to the throne of the Fire Nation. She would start practicing in firebending strategy. Azula's bending has only improved with all of this time and practice. Her fire turned blue, although we're unsure why we can make a pretty safe bet this is because of her element mastery. Moving on from her early life, we're going to take a look at her life during the show, her bending abilities, her non-bending abilities, and her relationship with the people around her. We don't get much of Azula in Season 1, just a glimpse of her during the Agni Kai we mentioned earlier. But entering Season 2, we see her make her grand entrance to the show. Country, we exchange a pleasant hello before asking questions. She devises a plan in which she lies to them, lures them onto the ship, and takes them home, then imprisons them, which is pretty smart in my opinion. But her plan didn't go her way when one of the guards We're slipped up and called Iroh and Zuko prisoners. They put two and two together and fought back. Iroh was able to take down all of the guards while Zuko confronts Azula one-on-one. -on -one telling her she lied, to which she responds sarcastically, It's not like I've ever done that before. Zuko and Azula then break into a fight. Azula would have won if it wasn't for Iroh throwing her off the side of the ship. This gives us our first look at how Azula uses strategy, in this case lying, to get the edge on her opponents. After failing to catch her brother and uncle, she goes after her childhood friends, Mei and Tai Li, to form a small tactical team. While seemingly insignificant at the time, the recruitment of her friends later played a key role in Azula's downfall. 
Another important fight we need to look at is her fight against the Avatar. While short, it shows us the length she'd go to get something her brother wants, the Avatar in this case, as she runs through Omashu and slides through the Omashu delivery chutes, shooting fire at Aang. This is one of the shortest fights in the series, but it shows us just how agile Azula is. There are plenty of other important fights throughout the second season that showcase just how powerful Azula is. For example, the fight seen in The Chase, when Azula fights off Zuko and the Avatar at the same time, and later fights off and escapes five Master Benders, all after taking down Iroh. All small Season 2 fights lead up to the major fight in the finale of the second season, The Crossroads of Destiny. This fight is one of the major fights in Avatar The Last Airbender, but it's also one of the most defining for Azula. This fight shows us her smarts and bending mastery. The fight starts between Azula and Katara before Azula turns to fight Aang. She's fighting Aang with everything she's got and manages to throw him back into a rock wall. Azula and her Dai Li agents surrounded Aang. This is when Aang gave up Katara and was able to enter the Avatar state. Azula, knowing it could kill him, took this opportunity to take Aang down. She shoots him in the back with a bolt of lightning, forcing him out of the Avatar state and nearly killing him. Azula is then joined by her brother, and they return to the Fire Nation for Season 3. Season 3 is where we see Azula the most, and it shows us a more emotional side of Azula. There aren't many fights in early Season 3 involving Azula, but in the episode The Beach, we get a few different examples of just how vulnerable she really is. While at a party on Ember Island, no boys are interested in Azula, which makes her mad, but secretly upset. She then takes this out on Tai Li, telling her that none of the boys are really interested in her and that she's just a tease. This upsets Tai Li, which makes Azula feel bad and confess that she's jealous. I didn't even think it was possible for Azula to feel emotion. After some time, towards the end of the episode, Azula and her friends are talking around a fire, and Azula tells the others that she's had a perfect life, only to admit that it hurt her knowing her mom thought she was a monster. She quickly shifts away from herself, but as her friends talk about their lives, specifically as Tai Lee talks about her childhood, Azula looks almost sympathetic. One of the most pointed out scenes is during this scene, when Tai Lee is talking about her sisters, Azula is looking at her as if she's worried about her. But as soon as Tai Lee looks up at her, she looks away, almost as if she cared, but didn't want anybody to know. The next time we see Azula is during the day of Black Sun, when Aang confronts her hoping to find Ozai. We learn that she brought Dai Li agents back to the Fire Nation with her, whom she sent to attack Aang, Sokka, and Toph, since she cannot bend during the eclipse. After defeating the agents, they pin Azula to the wall. She then delivers a few snarky remarks, taunts Sokka about Suki, and was able to break out of the rock holding her to the wall. The next time we see Azula after that, during the Boiling Rock episodes, she's fighting to keep her brother from escaping prison, but that's not the most important part of the episode. Mei stops the guards from cutting the gondola wire, allowing Zuko and the other prisoners to escape. When Azula gets back down to the prison, she confronts Mei and accuses her of being a traitor. Right when she was about to charge up and send a lightning bolt at Mei, Tai Li Chi blocked her, and she fell to the ground. It was here that we realized that she is truly alone. In the following episode, The Western Air Temple, Azula comes to the temple where the gang is hiding out with the intent to kill, yes, I said kill, her brother, yelling about how she's going to celebrate being an only child. She then gets into a fight with Zuko in which they both fall off the side of the war balloon. Zuko is caught by the gang, while they assume Azula would just fall to her death. But surprise, surprise, Azula is able to jet blast herself to the side of the mountain and use her hairpiece to keep her from falling. Another smart move on Azula's part. We don't see much of Azula until the series finale, when we start to see her breakdown begin. After being told by her father that she would be crowned the new Fire Lord, she banishes all of her servants, Dai Li agents, and tries to banish Lo and Li. We're still not sure which one she wanted gone. We then see her in a room getting ready for her coronation, and as she's pulling her disastrous hair up, she takes a pair of scissors and cuts off a huge chunk, giving her angled bangs. It is then that she hears her mother talking to her, and sees her in the mirror behind her. While Ursa tells Azula that she loves her, Azula is insisting that she hates her. That is when she throws her brush into the mirror, shattering it, and making Ursa disappear, revealing that she was just a figment of Azula's imagination. This leads to the final Agni Kai later on, while Azula is clearly not stable. Throughout the fight, we see clear signs that she's at her breaking point, throwing fire everywhere, blasting lightning in every direction, and laughing maniacally. Finally, when Katara is able to capture her and chain her down, she bursts out into a loud sob and falls over. When you take a closer look at this, you realize that in her last moments of clarity, she was just a hurt teenager that wanted her mom to love her. Before we dive into the possibility of her mental illnesses and what could have caused her instability, 
We want to look at what happened to her after the show ended, during the comics. When we first see her during the trilogy, The Search, she's in a straitjacket, bound for a mental health institution. We can only assume her brother put her there so that she would get the help she needed to get better. But Zuko let her go, which led to her trying to kill Ursa, taunt her newfound little sister, and run off. Throughout the comic, she's in and out. She'll come back to stir up chaos and then run off again. The last time we see her before the end of the comics is when she starts to kidnap children, one of which being her sisters, to get the people to turn against Zuko. That, however, didn't work out, and she slipped away one final time, never to be heard from again. Now that we've gone over everything we know about Azula at this point, I think we should start looking into why and what disorders she may have that could have caused her mental downfall. To knock the obvious choices out of the way, we see her envision her mother when she's not really there at the peak of her breakdown, and seeing people or things that aren't there is a common sign of schizophrenia. Schizophrenia also tends to disable a person's ability to think and feel correctly, which we see in the finale when she's crying and throughout the end of the series when she goes extremely power-hungry willing to do anything to be better than everybody. We also see throughout the comics that she envisions her mother and feels like her mother is talking to her. Another common sign. Azula is also a narcissist. This one is more of a bearing than possibly anything else, for the sole fact that we see her think she's better than everybody else, and acts as if she is. It happens throughout the entire series. How do you know? Because I'm a people person. Now we're not sure if there's an actual name for this, but she has some serious mommy issues. We see throughout the series that she struggles with dealing with the fact that her mother loved Zuko more than her, and this constantly drives her back to her saying that her mother thought she was a monster. In the comics, when Ursa is speaking with Azula, before remembering who she is, she says that if she really was her mother, she was sorry she didn't love her enough. Hearing this was absolutely heartbreaking for both the readers and Azula, as we see her break into a cry. There are a few other theories, one of which being that Azula has an antisocial personality disorder which comes from her lack of remorse and lack of empathy towards others. But there are also other theories to debunk this one. All around, Azula was the mental nutcase of the show. Or was she? There is a very popular fan theory stating that Azula knew exactly what she was doing, and she faked these illnesses so that she did not get imprisoned after the final Agni Kai. This theory, personally, seems a bit far-fetched, seeing as we see her downfall slowly start throughout the third season. But hey, it's the Avatar universe. Anything is possible. Time for the big question. Regardless of everything she did, it's important to look at everything she went through and remember that Azula is only 14. So, did Azula deserve a redemption arc? We think she did. We would have loved to see Azula get the help she needed and grow to be a better person, just like her brother Zuko did. In the end, Azula was really just a teenager that needed help. She never had a good example to follow and always lied to herself about her mother, which set her on a bad path and set her up for failure later on. What do you think? Did Azula deserve what she got, or do you think she should have gotten a redemption arc? Let us know in the comments below. Until next time, stay stay flaming. flaming!